All right, so we'll start with number five, and um, we'll draw this slope field. But uh, just remembered that we're not supposed to have those points, so we only go up to um, y is two. All right, so negative one, two. Uh, is the point that we're at on the slope field. So just a reminder that this is dy dx. This is the derivative of some function for all intents and purposes. Um, and the derivative of a function tells you the slope of that function at any given point. Uh, we need a point x comma y to plug into this expression. And once we do that, it'll tell us the slope, and then we draw the slope in the slope field. Uh, so at negative 1, 2, 2 minus 1 up top here is 1. And down here we have negative 1 squared, which will be positive 1. So we have 1 divided by 1, which gives us a slope of 1. So try to draw a nice 45 degree angle there. Um, now we're at negative 1, 1. Negative 1, 1. Uh, y is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And as long as the denominator is not 0, that's uh, just going to be 0. So 0 over, that's negative 1 squared, which is 1. So we have 0. So uh, we should take advantage of this. Uh, y is 0. Uh, or not, when y is 1, the numerator is 0, so we're going to have slopes of 0 here. So that's convenient for us. <coughs> okay, now let's come over here. Negative 1, 0. So negative 1 squared is 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 over 1 is a negative 1 slope. Like that. Come in over here. Remember, uh, the, the instructions say don't draw the slope field for any x value that's 0. So we'll come over here. So negative 1, 2, or sorry, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 2. Uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, and uh, that's a, a 1, so we should have a slope of 1. So we try to draw that slope of 1 again. Um, and 2 comma 2, that's going to give us 1 over 4, so 1 over 4 up 1 and over 4 is going to be not too steep. Let's come over here at 1, 0. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. And then we're going to get negative 1 fourth, like that. So there's your slope field. Um, and it would probably be best on your uh, answer sheets to indicate that, uh, that you have a slope of 1, a slope of 0, a slope of negative 1. So you don't leave them guessing as to what the slopes are. Slopes of 0, negative 1, negative 1 fourth. Or that's not negative 1 fourth, that's positive 1 fourth. And this one's negative 1 fourth. You could do a table of values or something, but it's, it, it's a good idea to indicate that you know what the slopes are. Okay. <coughs> So uh, find the particular solution for the for this differential equation. Um, if the initial condition is that f of two is equal to zero, um, this is part B. So to remind you, the <coughs> the solution to a differential equation is one um, basically a function that you can plug in for y and dy dx. That when you plug in y and dy dx it's true. Both sides of the equation would be the same thing. Um, to figure out what that function is, we do what's called separating the variables, which is getting the x's and dx's under one side and the y's and dy's on the other side. Um, so, yep, it's not going to take much skill to separate these variables just like that. Okay. So on this side, we have dy over, um, let's say, du over u. We have a, we have a function uh, in the denominator and a, its derivative in the numerator, and that is going to be the natural log of y minus 1. The derivative of y, is dy, or the derivative of y minus 1 is dy, so uh, that happens to be the, the natural log is the antiderivative of that. Um, this is... <coughs> You can write this as x to the negative 2 times dx. Okay, I went ahead and paused the video to have a coughing fit. Um, so now that we're looking at it, that as x to the negative 2 dx, we take the antiderivative. If we were to uh, 
uh, add one to the exponent, we would have negative one. Of course, we need a, a negative there. Um, in order for that to um, work out, so that if we took the derivative, we would get x to the negative two dx. So that works. And of course, we have the uh, constant of integration. So we might want to rewrite this a little bit as um, let's see, negative one over x plus c. Okay. Um, and now let's see, y minus one. Um, doesn't give any values for y, so um, if we want to solve for y, then we just rewrite this in um, exponential form. So this would be base e, so e to this power, negative 1 over x plus c equals y minus 1. Um, Remember that if we're looking at e to the something plus c, if we have plus c up here, um, then we can look at it as e to the negative 1 over x times e to the c. That's how we could add the exponents. Well, e to the c is just going to be some number. Um, once we raise e to that constant, it's going to be some number. Let's call that number k, and that number k is going to get multiplied by e to the negative 1 over x. Um, and that equals y minus 1. So y, bring it up here, y minus, well, let's say y equals uh, k times e to the negative 1 over x plus 1. Um, so that's great, except for we don't know what k is, but they do tell us that y, or that f of 2 is 0. So that means that if we were to put 2 in there, we should get 0. So we just need to solve for k. So we get negative 1 equals k times e to the negative 1 half. So <coughs> um, this is you know like k over e to the 1 half power. So we get negative e to the 1 half equals k by multiplying both sides by e to the 1 half. OK. Um, no, that'll do it. So k is negative e to the 1 half. So y equals negative e to the 1 half, that's k, times e to the negative, 1 over x. And then we add 1. And so that'll be y is negative e to the 1 half minus 1 over x plus 1. Uh, so there is our uh, particular solution with the initial condition. Um, for the particular solution, y equals f of x, which we just found, described in part b, find the limit as x approaches infinity. So what's going to happen to this function as x approaches infinity? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Uh, another coughing fit. Um, so as x approaches infinity, what's going to happen to this expression? Well, this 1 over big, big number, 1 divided by a huge number, is going to pretty much be 0. Um, so as x gets larger, this approaches 0, which means that this approaches 1 half. So the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, um, this being f of x, say that. Uh, so this goes to 0, this goes to 1 half, so what we have is 1 minus e to the 1 half, or 1 minus the square root of e. And that would be it. Okay, um, number 6. equal to the natural log of x over x for all x that are greater than 0. Um, the derivative of f is already given. 
obviously I don't really care if we know how to find the derivative on this problem. Okay, so write an equation for the tangent line of the graph uh, of f at x equals e squared. x equals e squared. Um, well, remember that we can either choose y equals mx plus b, that's the equation of a line, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, that's also the equation, well, there's lots of equations of lines, these are the two most common ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this one right here, the point-slope form. Um, so all we need to know to fill this in would be one point on the, uh, on the tangent line and the slope of the tangent line. Uh, well, they tell us that e is, or that x is e squared, um, and since this tangent line is touching this graph, uh, the y value on that line would also be the y value uh, on this graph at e squared. So to find y, or y1 that we're going to use, that's going to be equal to the natural log of e squared over e squared, and uh, that ought to be that ought to be it. So e squared, the natural log of e squared is two, and that's over e squared. So y is two over e squared. So y minus two over. Now I'm filling in this equation over here. Y minus two over e squared equals the slope. The slope at e squared. So this gives the slope. So we put e squared in there. Um, one minus the natural log of e squared would be two over uh, x squared, which uh, x is e squared, and we square that. That's the slope times x minus x1. So y minus 2 over e squared equals, just going to clean this up a bit here, we got negative 1 over e to the fourth times x minus e squared. And they're not too picky about how your answer looks. This will be just fine right here. Negative 1 over e to the fourth <coughs> times x minus e squared plus 2 over e squared. So that would be an equation that is uh, the equation of the tangent line at that point. And that would be good enough. So uh, part B, um, find the x-coordinate of the critical point of f, determine whether the this point is a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither for the function f, just find your answer. So uh, critical value would be <coughs> or the critical point, would be where the slope is either zero or undefined, or the derivative is zero or undefined. So let's see, one minus uh, natural log of x over x squared is either zero or undefined. So since, if it's, if it's undefined, if the slope is undefined, clearly that's not going to be a maximum or a minimum, so we're going to assume what they mean is that it's equal to zero, which would mean that one minus natural log of x is equal to zero, um, which would mean that the natural log of x equals 1, uh, which means e to the 1 equals x. Uh, so we would need this to be uh, just e. So x is e. At the value of e, <coughs> we have a critical value or a critical point. Um, so what's going on here? Is it a maximum and a minimum um, or neither? If it's a maximum, then it would have to have positive slopes on the left and negative slopes on the right, and vice versa if it's a minimum. Um, and since it's at E, and we know that the slope is undefined at 0, we just want to um, look at E, <coughs> to look to the left of E, look to the right of E, but don't go so far to the left that we're at, uh, at you know, left of, of 0. So we'll look at uh, 1 and 3. Uh, those are probably pretty the, the, the easiest ones. So they're going to tell us, we're going to find out the slopes here at both of these values and see what's going on. And uh, But they want to justify, so we're going to have to do a little bit more than a sign chart here. So the slope uh, of this graph, when we put in 1, okay, so the natural log of 1 
is going to be 0. So 1 minus 0. So we got 1 up here. 1 in the numerator. Then we put 1 down here. 1 squared is 1. That's positive. So we've got positive slopes on the left. Put 3 in there. Um, the natural log of 3 is going to be slightly bigger than 1. Um, so 1 minus something bigger than 1 is negative. Down here is positive. All we need to know is that it's negative. Okay. Um, and since there's no other, um, let's see, no other zero slopes, we can say that um, for x values that are at least between 0 and e, uh, f prime of x is positive, or we could, we could put greater than 0. Um, so since that, and for um, x values that are, uh, let's say, greater than 3, f prime of x is less than 0, uh, there is a maximum at x equals e. So that would be good enough there. Part C. The graph of the function f has exactly one point of inflection. Find the x-coordinate of this point. So they're telling you that it has one point of inflection, um, which means that we, um, we know if we find a a zero for the second derivative, and there's only one zero for the second derivative, that we found the point of inflection. Um, so we're going to take f prime of x, which is 1 minus the natural log of x over x squared. Take the derivative of that using the um, quotient rule. So second derivative. So the <coughs> derivative of this is negative 1 over x. Um, times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, 2x, times the numerator, 1 minus natural log of x, over x to the fourth. Now we square the denominator. Okay. Uh, so if the numerator is equal to 0, maybe we can uh, minus 2x plus to x natural log x, if that's equal to 0, then we will have found a point of inflection. Um, let's see, we'll get, let's just cancel this out, we get negative x minus 2x plus 2x natural log x equals 0. So you get negative 3x plus 2x natural log x. Factor out an x, x times uh, negative 3 plus 2 natural log x. Um, that's equal to 0. So either x equals 0, which we know is not a point of inflection because we already know that the, the, the slope is undefined at that point, so that's not going to be a point of inflection. Um, and so we also, we also know that the graph itself is undefined, so it's probably a vertical asymptote there. Um, let's say... No, they... Oh, it says for all x's that are greater than 0, so that's not even a consideration. The x equals 0 isn't even in the domain of this function. So negative 3 plus 2 natural log x equals 0. Uh, that means natural log x equals 3 halves. And x equals e to the 3 halves. Um, so the, the justification... Um, they're not even asking for because they're giving you that there is. They're saying it's it's a fact that the, that it does have one point of inflection. X equals zero is not in the domain, uh, and there's only one other solution to this equation. So x equals uh, e to the three halves has to be it. And the last part: find the limit as x approaches zero from the right of f of x. So the limit as x approaches zero from the right of f of x, which is the natural log of x over x. 
Um, so, let's see, as we put in um, numbers that are close to zero on the right, we know that when we're dividing by uh, zero, we're getting a just a large number. When we divide num a number by a small number, we just get a large number. Um, what do we get as we put in numbers that are close to zero uh, into the natural log of x? So the natural log of, of really small numbers, uh, we would be looking for exponents of e that give us small numbers. Right, that's what that would mean, putting in numbers that are close to zero, um, which means that these numbers are less than one. e to the zero would be a one, e to the negative numbers would be small numbers. So what we would get out of this is negative numbers. Um, and let's see, rather, let's see, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. We would get negative numbers. We'd divide them by a very small number, which would give us a very large negative number. So negative infinity. Uh, and that would be it. It approaches negative infinity, or you could say technically it doesn't exist, because that's not really a, a, a limit when you go off to some infinity. Um, that's it. That should help you through those last couple of problems. If you still have questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.